Mrs. Anderson's here. Mr. Anderson is out today due to his body not maintaining homeostasis. We are all made up of cells, but how does our body make all these cells? How do these cells actually multiply to make up all of us? Simple. The cell cycle control system. Dun, dun, dun. The cell cycle depends on the type of cell and what its function is. Checkpoints are control points where there are stop and go signals that regulate the cycle. What allows for the cycle to keep going, you may ask? Cyclin, cyclin-dependent kinases, and MPF are proteins that help trigger progression through the cell cycle. The cell cycle refers to mitotic cell division. If this cycle malfunctions due to a mutated cell, certain diseases such as cancer can arise and damage the entire organism. In cancer, the checkpoints fail which allows the cell to divide uncontrollably and produce a colony of mutated cells. Now first, let's look at mitosis. Mitosis is the process in which somatic cells divide into two identical daughter cells. But that is a basic explanation of mitosis. In detail, there are a variety of steps that go along with the cell dividing, five to be exact. These steps are interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. After telophase comes cytokinesis. This stage of mitosis is typically known as the resting phase, but there is a lot more to it. During interphase, there are three phases that occur, G1 phase, S phase, and G2 phase. G1 represents the cell's growing period. S phase is where the genetic material within the nucleus is replicated, because when the cells divide, they only have half the DNA to make a complete daughter cell. The replication of the new DNA allows for the daughter cell to have the complete 46 chromosomes they need. Lastly, G2 phase represents the continuing growth of the cell, which gets the cell ready for the cell disposition. Within prophase, the nucleolus disappears within the cell, the nuclear envelope breaks down, and the chromatin condenses into chromosomes, which are thread-like structures of nucleic acids and proteins that contain the actual genes. Then comes the separation of chromosomes due to the mitotic spindle. The spindle is a tube-like structure that organizes and separates the chromosomes. This is also the step in which the chromosomes become visible under a microscope. Technically, before metaphase even begins, there is another step named prometaphase. During this phase, the nuclear envelope disassembles and the chromosomes develop two kinetochores at their centromere. These kinetochores are what the spindle fibers latch onto so that these homologous chromosomes can be pulled towards the metaphase plate. Metaphase, specifically, is where the chromosomes lie across the plate at right angles, which is different in metaphase 1, which we will speak about later on. This is where the centromeres divide and the sister chromatids of each chromosome are pulled apart and moved to the opposite ends of the cell, pulled by spindle fibers attached to the kinetochore regions. The separated sister chromatids are now referred to as daughter chromosomes. Here, the nuclear membrane reforms around the chromosomes grouped at either ends of the cell. Also, the chromosomes uncoil and become diffuse, and the spindle fibers disappear, which also leads to the nuclear envelope reforming. In cytokinesis, the parent cell finally physically splits into the two visible identical daughter cells, which is already beginning at the end of mitosis. The actual act of separation is called cleavage. The identical daughter cells have two copies of 23 chromosomes or autosomes. Because they have a full set of chromosomes, these cells are also called diploids. This process cannot occur without the formation of the cleavage furrow. The cleavage furrow is what actually pinches the cell in two. Although all these steps occur in both animal and plant cells, there is one difference that arises specifically in cytokinesis. Much like the cleavage furrow in animal cells, plant cells have a cell plate that functions as a mechanism that separates the identical daughter cells that are forming. Intermission! Woo! Time for random joke time! One! What did one cell say to a sister cell when she stepped on his toe? Mitosis. Get it? Mitosis. Mitosis. I know. <laughs> yep. Okay. Next. Two. How does Juliet maintain a constant body temperature? Anyone know? No? Okay. Romeostasis. Get it? Romeostasis? Sounds like homeostasis. <laughs> so yep. funny. Okay. Meiosis, on the other hand, is similar, but with more steps and more end products. This is a special type of cell division that occurs in sexually reproducing organisms only. Rather than creating cells that have 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs, meiosis creates gametes, or sex cells, that have 23 chromosomes only. 
Crossing over is a process that occurs during meiosis where two of the chromosomes involved pair up and exchange segments of their genetic material. Variation causes genetic and biological diversity. Because if every organism would be the same forever, with no change in DNA or mutations, then there would be no evolution. For this stage, it is exactly like mitosis with each of the phases that it goes through, except there are two differences. One difference is that in metaphase, this time, the chromosomes line up in a double row across the metaphase plate, and the homologous chromosomes line up together. The other difference between meiosis and mitosis is that instead of having two copies of each chromosome, the newly formed, formed haploid cells have one copy of each chromosome. In meiosis 2, the similar process of mitosis occurs again, doing the same as meiosis 1, but again. The end product is a bit different since the amount of chromosomes are now halved again. After the gametes are made from meiosis, a man and woman now have the cells needed to create a child. Using sexual reproduction, a zygote is formed when the sperm of the father meets the egg of the mother, and the egg is now fertilized. Thanks to fertilization, this new zygote is a cell that includes all 23 of the chromosomes from both mom and dad to make the complete 46 within the new child. Among the many chromosomes that are in the child, the sex chromosomes may be considered the most significant due to the fact that they determine the gender. Thank you, and we hope this video helps.